Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 70 of the current health crisis and today again it's all about the phases as regions are going to be moving into different phases as of Monday. Now firstly a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of debate happening there again. Thanks for your opinions on the topics. A big thanks to all of the people that supported the channel through a small donation. You can see your name here. Big thanks to all of the people that bought merchandise and a big thanks again to my patrons on Patreon. Thanks there for your support. Now as I said it's all about phase one and phase two here in Spain at the moment because all of the regions that were in phase zero and now allowed to go to phase one on Monday. So let's have a look. Madrid, Barcelona, Castilla Leon pass to phase one. Valencia is the only one that does not advance in the de-escalation. So some good news there for people in Madrid, Barcelona, Castilla Leon, etc. who are now able to go to phase one. And finally, we'll be able to see some family and friends that we haven't seen outside of a video call for the last 70 days. So good news there. Now let's have a look at the de-escalation phase map so we can get an idea here of where we are in Spain and what phase we are going to be in. So we can see here that as of the 25th of May, all of Spain is in phase one or phase two. So the orange area is phase one and the bluey green areas phase two. And we can see here that the Comunidad Valenciana, the Valencian community, all in orange. Murcia here now goes into phase two. So does Almeria, but Granada and Malaga stay in phase one and the rest of Andalusia goes into phase two, Extremadura into phase two as well, as well as Galicia, Asturias, Cantabria and the Basque country and some areas there in Castilla, La Mancha and Aragon. And all of the islands now in phase two. So fantastic news if you're living in the Canary Islands or if you are in the Balearic Islands, you are now going into phase two. So of course that leads to the question, what can you do now in phase two? So let's have a look. Among the measures included in phase two of the de-escalation is the elimination of time slots, the expansion of the number of people who can meet, visiting relatives in residences or opening beaches and swimming pools. So let's have a look in better detail here at that. So phase two, for example, where can I travel to? Well, it's the same as phase one. You can only travel in your territorial unit, province, island or health region. Can I leave my province? No, you cannot for the time being. Are there time slots for exercise? No, they have been eliminated. There are only time slots for seniors, 70 plus, and they continue to be from 10 a.m. to 12 noon and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And other people can't interfere with the time slots for seniors, okay? The rest of the population can't go out and do exercise in those time slots. You have to respect the senior time slots. How many people can get together in groups? Up to 15 family and friends. You can meet at somebody's home or you can go to a restaurant or a bar. Can I visit a relative in an elderly residence? Yes, but by appointment only. Can I have a meal inside a restaurant? Yes, 40% maximum capacity. Can I go to the beach or a pool? Yes, you can. Public pools are by appointment only and beach rules are subject to municipality. And will shopping centers open? Yes, they will, but with reduced capacity and distancing rules. So one of the main changes here regarding shopping areas is that now shops bigger than 400 square meters are allowed to open in phase two. So a few changes there from what you could do in phase one if you are going into phase two. But remember that a fair slab of the country is either going into phase one or remaining in phase one, for example, Valencia community as we saw before. Now, as we just saw, there's gonna be some changes in phase two regarding the use of beaches. And we can see here, how will beaches be in each community? There will be drones, capacity control, apps or cameras. Municipalities, autonomous communities and experts debate on how to reduce the capacity and the possibilities of contagion on beaches. And there's a couple of areas here that have put forward ideas as to what they're going to do. So for example, we can see here in Galicia, the Shunta, the Galician government, will propose to the Galician councils a system so that citizens who want to go to the beach this summer can formulate a request for an online appointment. As reported by the autonomous government last Monday, this tool will allow 
allow citizens to obtain accreditation to access a specific beach on a selected date with a mechanism similar to that used on the beaches of the cathedrals. The cathedrals, of course, being a specific beach in the north of Spain. And another one here in the Valencian community, we can see that the Generalitat is working on the elaboration of a catalogue of beaches in the Valencian community to spread the enormous wealth of the Valencian coast and a computer application that allows people to know the level of occupation of the beaches before deciding which one to go to. So as we saw there, beaches are going to open again, but there's going to be strict rules controlling the access to those beaches. So remember to download an app if there is one in your local community, if you want to go to the beach this summer in Spain or in phase two or phase three of this de-escalation. But again, the rules and regulations will depend on each municipality. Now beaches have been a bit of a hotspot over the last few days and we've seen in Barcelona specifically, that there have been crowds of people going to the beaches and basically forgetting the rules that are in place at the moment. And we can see here that beaches in Barcelona were subject to agglomerations and prohibited activities when they opened last week. And we can see here that some citizens have sunbathed on the sand or bathed in the sea despite not being allowed. So even though the beaches in Barcelona are open, you're not allowed to sit on the sand, you're only allowed to walk on the sand to do some type of exercise and swimming is prohibited. And I'm sure that's the same in other areas that are going into phase one as well. Remember, phase two is the time when beaches will start to open again not phase one if that is your particular situation. Now the Madrid Lord Mayor, Mr. Almeida, also came out yesterday and talked about the future of tourism in Madrid. And he said the return of international tourism to Madrid in 2021 and is already working on a revival plan. He said the city council is working on a plan to reactivate this tourism to generate confidence and the tourists know that they can get to Madrid without fear. So 2021, the date set by Madrid for international tourism to return to any type of normality. And that's also bad news for a lot of other areas in Spain because Madrid is one of the main tourist hubs and a lot of the tourism starts in Madrid and works its way to other areas in Spain. So for example, some parts of Andalusia depend on Madrid for their transport. For example, Seville and Córdoba with the fast train and other areas like that. So if Madrid is not open for international tourism, it will be hard for other areas to open up as well, unless they have some type of independent airport, I suspect, or they develop those travel corridors that we mentioned the other day, and people can travel directly to the place and not spread to other areas in Spain, for example, the Canary Islands or the Balearic Islands. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. Now the first one here from Arthur. Hi Stuart, thank you for the very informative videos. When this is all over, would you consider doing a video on Jaén City? Have recently bought a house about 20 minutes away, would love to see or hear your take on the place. Here, Arthur, thanks for the comment. I do plan to travel around Spain again once the restrictions are lifted and I'm able to leave my local municipality. On Monday, I'll be able to travel around the Madrid region, but we're not allowed to travel to other areas yet. And even in phase two, we're not allowed to travel to other provinces. So we're probably gonna have to wait a little bit longer before we can start traveling around Spain again. But I do have many places on my agenda to visit this year. Although Jaén in the middle of summer is probably not one of the better places to visit in Spain, as it can be extremely hot. It is one of these interior places in Andalusia, but it is a very nice place to visit. They have a fantastic mountain area there called Cazorla, and uh, some of the cities in Jaén are also quite attractive. For example, Baeza, Bailén, cities like that. And one thing you'll notice in Jaén is the smell that those olive oil refineries give off, which is a bit of a strange smell if you're not used to it, but uh, very noticeable in that part of the world. But uh, Jaén, nice place, and I will definitely go there as soon as I can. One here from Kenneth. Hi, we're flying out to Fuengirola from the UK on June the 30th. Will the restrictions still be on or should we amend to later on in the year? Yeah, Kenneth, I'd most likely say that the restrictions are still gonna be on, so be careful with that. Check back in a couple of weeks to see if there have been any changes, but the 30th of June does seem a little bit soon, considering that Fuengirola is still in phase one at the moment and going through the phase system a little bit slower than other parts of Spain. So the 30th of June, in my opinion, a little bit soon, and uh, I'd probably postpone for a little bit later in the year or a little bit later in the summer if you can. One here from Valeria, Melbourne is freezing, worried about getting the sniffles, not knowing if it's the Rona or just a common cold. 
Hope there are extra tests because Melbourne flu is bad. This is when we come to Spain to enjoy the sun, but doesn't look like it will happen in 2020. I'll just keep enjoying your videos and pretend I'm in Spain. Saludos from down under. Yeah, Valeria, I feel for you there in Melbourne going into your cold winter. Melbourne can be a fairly cold place over the winter months, but the good news for you guys is that footy is back as of next month. So that's going to be something to look forward to and maybe help you get through those cold winter months. And uh, a lot of Aussies that were looking to come to Europe this summer, their hopes for a holiday to Europe obviously have been dashed. So not good news there for you if you were planning to come to Europe this summer. One here from Christian. Hi, Stuart. Thanks for the good work. Your videos are part of my daily routine. To answer your question, Spain will never recover if the current government has something to say in the matter. Right now, it's not about COVID-19 anymore. It seems it is more important for them to work their way through the socialist wish list. The only thing they will achieve is bringing a proud nation to its knees and they will take down Europe with them. Yeah, Christian, I see that this comment was quite popular. I think 17 or so people liked this comment. And uh, that is the thought of a lot of people here in Spain, that the government is working on its own agenda. It's a socialist agenda, if you like, because they are a socialist party. They are in power with Podemos, who are even further left on the scale. And some people do think they are trying to push through their agenda during the state of alarm. So what's your opinion, questions or comments? Leave them in the section below as to what the future of Spain is from a political political point of view. One here from Louis Stewart. Are you allowed to travel by car through the whole province of Alicante living there or is it still restricted to the health region or the local hospital? Yeah, Louis, in phase one in Alicante, you can leave your municipality. You can travel to other parts of the province as long as they are also in phase one, which I believe to be the case. You can take your car and travel to another pueblo and have a coffee, have a meal, do whatever you like there. But remember that tourism activities are limited to organized tourism groups. So you can't just go off for a walk in the mountains by yourself, apparently. But you can travel to other places, as I said, to have a meal, visit friends, things like that. One here from Joy. Hi, thanks for everything. I belong to a Spanish bank. I have been waiting for my redundancy pay since March. Tell the tourists coming to Galicia to take warm jackets as the evenings can be quite chilly. Joy from Galicia. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Joy. Sorry to see that you haven't got your redundancy pay yet. I know that there are a few people in the same situation as you, but hopefully it's going to get sorted out over the next few weeks. And if you have a Spanish bank account, it should be easier. This is related to the topic that we brought up the other day about the N26 bank and the person that wasn't able to get their money because she had that bank account. And tourists coming to Galicia, you're right, it can be a bit chilly there. The Atlantic weather can make it a bit chilly there of an evening, and it's a good idea to have something to put on if it does get a little bit cold. Now, speaking about Galicia, somebody got in touch with me and apparently Canal Cuatro, which is one of the television stations here, is looking for expats in the Rias Baixas area to do some type of interview for the television. So if you're interested in participating in that, go to the Canal Cuatro Facebook page and tell them your story. Tell them that you are a foreigner living in that part of the world and that you'd be interested in participating on that show. So the Canal Cuatro for Facebook page. One here from Oliver. Hi, Stuart. I'm a UK citizen who has lived in Ortega for the past six months. I work in the UK in the oil and gas sector. Therefore, I have been given a letter from my employer explaining that I am a key worker. Can I re-enter Spain with this? Does this count as cross-border work? And the addition of my Padron paperwork. Also, can you shed any light on exceptional circumstances I keep reading about with regards to entry? Examples would be great. Yeah, Ali, I'm not 100% sure what those key workers are, apart from the ones that work in the health system. I know that doctors and nurses and other people that work in the health system are considered key workers at the moment. There are also other key sector jobs, but I don't know exactly what those are. If anybody does know, please leave it in the comment section below so that you can help Ollie out. I suppose that if your company says that you are a key worker and you have some type of documentation to get into the country, as well as the Padron, that might be enough. I suggest you get in contact with the embassy or maybe the local area where you are working. And ask them if you are considered to be a key worker, because according to the official Gazette, there is a list of what they classify as key workers. So whether you are one or not, depends on what they say in that Gazette. One here from Corey, can't say I really understand all the hubbub about the face masks. Where I live, barely half the people were wearing them anyway, even though the streets are packed. Same story yesterday, not a cop in sight handing out fines. 
Yeah, Corey, a lot of talk at the moment about face masks. I went out yesterday and everybody that I saw virtually was wearing a face mask. Even though there was a lot of distance between people, people just seemed to prefer to put them on, at least where I am here. In your particular area, as you said here, the police don't really seem to care if people have them on or not. So maybe it's a little bit more relaxed there. I don't know. Let us know in the comment section below what your particular area is like, if people are wearing masks or not, if the streets are crowded and people are not wearing masks. Let us know in the comment section below what your particular situation is. And finally, one here from Lane. Well, I've been doing my bit to keep Spanish viticulture flourishing with a bottle of fiery Spanish Rioja, for some reason bearing the name Muriel on the label. Yeah, thanks for the comment and good to see that you are supporting the local economy by drinking that fiery Spanish wine. Bodegas Muriel, I think, is the one that you referred to. They are in the Rioja area. Maybe they have some other wineries around Spain as well. And you can see the publicity for that particular bodega or winery all throughout that region. So keep it up and keep drinking that Spanish wine, which I must say is a fairly good drop and quite reasonably priced. So on that note, I'll wrap that video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll let you guys debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you like. It. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.